Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars and this is in the time leading up to the Lion's Gate in August of 2017 and I'm here to discuss today a little about a little more about um, killings and murders and their motives and this whole blog coming up has to do with the video has to do with um, consequentialism and consequentialist killings or murders and in also to do with my my own feeling about consequentialism the falseness in fact of consequentialism uh, and why this is so some time ago in the stories on the astral plane there was an instance or two of of murders that occurred uh, in the interests of, of a group considered to be a very uh, high cause, you know. So you could apply that to a spiritual group or a social cause. Practically any kind of group might fit that description if the people that were in it were very dedicated to it. And the notion was a consequentialist notion that that murder of one person that brought great wealth to the group would be um, would be not a sin, so so and in fact would be a great blessing. So so the murders in 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 those kinds of instances occur because the person believes that they are doing good. Consequentialist theory allows them to think that. A different MO that's been used quite recently uh, with the same rationale of donating to a worthy cause or um, organization um, is the murder of people for body parts. That whole scheme has not yet come to light. Um, I think it's taking place here and there around the world right now. One way to circumvent that scheme would be for the places that oversee um, the reception of body parts to use greater discretion and greater checks and um, quality control on where the, the bodies come from, the manner of people's death and so forth. I think that will help a lot because the parts have to be sold somewhere. Uh, I think they're being um, passed off as auto accidents and so forth. So we need to look at at the, the end point, the place that gives the money for the donation of those parts. That's my thought about that more recent situation that has cropped up. Oh yes, here's one other case. Uh, there was an instance some decades back when a bunch of people who had psychic abilities, they were men with a high intellectual-like ability and psychic abilities, they got together, they wanted to do some consequentialist experiments on humankind. And so they got together and from time to time they pooled their sperm. Uh, so that no one would know for sure whose sperm was actually involved in, in the project that they were all contributing to. They wanted to grow babies from their own gene pool so that they could create a race of super psi people to rule Earth, to rule the uh, other human beings on Earth for their own good and for their eventual spiritual upliftment. What would happen was together they would mind control a woman visitor to the place where they were and they, they had a contraption, a um, penile aid that injected this sperm into the woman. So they would mind control her actually right out into the, in the open apparently in some cases. Into, um, into having sex with, with one of them. This one person had a, an unusually shaped small penis and he used the um, contraption, whatever it was, to insert the sperm of all the other people into the woman. 
he actually performed the act with a foreign object so that the other people experimented the woman and then quite a number of women apparently got pregnant and something in some way the children were bought or um, the, the mother was disposed of or, or minimized in some way so that she, uh, the children were taken and used in experiments. Uh, these children were raised, as I understand it, to become psychic assassins. Some of the problems that arose with that batch of children were that they were the product of rape and it, uh, there was damage in the first place to their father's uh, DNA that caused them to undertake the consequentialist philosophy. Uh, in psychology, they would probably be labeled antisocial personalities. So the children that they had were um, were half had half of the genetic makeup, at least, of an antisocial personality. The group required that their genitals be mutilated. I don't know in what manner. Uh, that was supposed to increase their psychic abilities. And uh, the children had a choice to stay in the group and mutilate their genitals or to leave the group with the complete genitals they were born with. So uh, those that remained were genitally mutilated. Their mothers had been raped and either minimized or or slain, and their fathers were antisocial personalities, and these were the people that taught them. So, so what they inherited, two traits, misogyny, hatred of women, and rape. So many of them, it seems, turned to rape, raping women and killing women, and so they had to turn to homosexual relationships because their heterosexual relationships did not last that long before they killed the women. Uh, in addition, they were taught to be psychic assassins through, um, through psychic heart attack. And what would happen would be that the people that they were with uh, intimately, uh, in moments when the unconscious mind arose, such as in the dream state, when they were in the dream state, or under the influence of uh, alcohol, say, or a recreational drug, their subconscious mind would remember that technique, and if they were angry with the, their significant other, they would kill them with the psychic heart attack techniques. Thank God those techniques no longer worth, work on New Earth. However, during the interval when this, this, all this came down, many uh, significant others of these young people uh, met untimely deaths. In addition, they were hired out as psychic assassins. The work that they undertook accrued to them great karma, and quite frequently they found untimely deaths. So essentially, their parents, their fathers, you couldn't call it murder. Uh, they had great hopes for them, but in fact, what happened was quite a bit of murder of the children, of the mothers, of the uh, of the intended victims for cash for the organization, and of the of the significant others of the young people. Quite a story, huh? Uh, now, in more recent years, the children of the original plan that I just discussed, the consequentialist plan to breed side children that would take over the world for, for the normal human's own good, right? Second generation devised a plan for a community of polyamorous gay men and women to breed the... Uh, the psychic leaders of the future of the world. Uh, one Claire story that I heard about the manner of uh, impregnation was that there was a sperm bank purported to be the sperm of the leader of the group, but in fact composed of the combined sperm of other members of the group. And, and uh, the leader would ask the, the women in the group to become pregnant so that uh, he could take their babies away from them, as I understand it, and use them for uh, experiments to, to breed the superhuman 
Psy people of the future. So this is a very unique second scheme uh, that also involved bringing um, promising youngsters with Psy abilities, special abilities into the community, uh, if, especially if they were the children of a single mother who was having trouble making ends meet, so essentially they would buy these children uh, from the mother and then find a way to minimize her either through impoverishing her or through actually doing away with her. Uh, and the child was then inducted, do you say, into the community uh, for these experiments, these ongoing experiments to create this, the super race. I think that happened maybe in batches of five or six for a while. And but uh, for the two groups of five or six children that I observed on the psychic plane, uh, the difficulty was that the manner of rearing was so austere and so uh, lacking in love that the children, uh, although very shy, became uh, mentally imbalanced, in fact prone to acts of psychic warfare against other people. And they were also difficult to control physically because they would kill their guards and escape from the room that they were imprisoned in. And so, in the end, those experiments that I witnessed uh, clearly resulted in the, the woman who was taking care of them euthanizing both batches of children. According to my clear understanding of what she said, those experiments had been taking place for quite some time. I asked uh, one of the people who participated in that ex experiment, an unusual consequentialist experiment, um, how he felt about those children dying, which is in essence is sa sacrificing his own children, potentially. He said he felt that those children were just a part of him so that it was all right for them to be used in that way. I do have a few things to say about consequentialist theory. Um, I feel that it comes from an insufficient understanding of the nature of time and space. Consequentialist theory is developed beneath the, the borderline of the causal plane. It's a construct based on the inevitable enfoldment of a particular timeline. Uh, what it doesn't take into consideration are the notions of grace and uh, forgiveness and uh, benevolence of God and the abundance of all things in the universe being available to us when we align our wills with that of God. For instance, a person might feel our organization in order to survive must have much more money. And then a person might feel, well, here is this person, they have lots of money, particularly in the instance of wealthy women. This is, this is the instance that I'm talking about. This person um, has plenty of money. Let's just find a very ingenious two-person way, which I've discussed in the past, to, to, get, to eliminate that woman and, and, and take her money for our group. And many, many people will benefit from that. Think of all the good that we do in the world like that, right? So my proposition is that instead of enacting that very simple plan of uh, subterfuge and evading the law in order to create the greater good, we look to the multiplicity of, of timelines and dimensions in the world and find that one which works to create the greatest good for all beings everywhere. And that's the basis of my um, ac activations of light through the Hathors that you can see in another category of my website. So I say step beyond time and space when we make these decisions. So now, stepping back into the causal realm, what really happens when we murder a child in a scientific experiment to create a genetic uh, super race of, of super psi beings, say, which we feel will wisely rule this Earth? Um, first, everything is taking place in the now, in the eternal now. 
it's not really taking place in a, a time timeline sequence. Timeline sequences are the artificial artifact of the left brain. Really, they're directed through the eighth uh, chakra up above our head, and they can be changed through the eighth chakra through an a act of awareness, pure awareness at the eighth and ninth chakra levels above our head. At the highest, that's three feet above our head, I'd say. So, uh, and that's discussed under eighth chakra bow tie in another category of my of my blogs. So. So just getting back to the eternal now and the moment when we decide to kill the child who has participated in this, this construct, this experiment, hoped to be for the greater good of humankind that involves killing the child. All right. And so there is a person who kills. That will be the, the uh, female delegate of the person conducting the experiment who uh, is carrying out the experiment so that the original person who c came up with the idea won't be legally liable for it. That's a whole separate issue, I feel, uh, who is really liable in the soul perspective. I'd say, depending on the amount of mind control involved, both people are liable. Both are creating, through the act of killing the child, distortions of their own DNA. We call it karmic miasmic distortions or uh, morphogenetic field distortions. But actually in the physical body and in the DNA that carries from lifetime to lifetime, what it is is uh, miscoding, uh, incorrect coding of the DNA. Uh, in the child that is killed, the, the act of killing creates uh, the opposite uh, form of uh, miscoding of the DNA sequences. In future incarnations, both all the people who participated in a consequentialist experiment of this nature uh, carry with them the soul DNA that is miscoded and must be purified and made right by the incoming light. So so what happens, in fact, in the case of a person, say, who has great power on earth, and there are a lot of people like that, who have great power on earth and also have a great deal of miscoding of their DNA sequences, when they devise the notion that they are, uh, they are the very uh, top, the epitome of of humankind right now. This often happens with a category of people this psychology calls antisocial personalities. They understand that they're very different from other human beings. Sometimes they think they're hybrids. Sometimes they think they're prophets. It, it, sometimes they think they're aliens from outer space. This is their way of terming the fact that they feel a great gulf between themselves and, and the understanding and way of life of, of what they call normals normal human beings. Um, and they're right about that. But the notion that the ego has that that's the way to be and that other people are, are wrong may be mistaken. However, it's universally held by antisocial anti beings that in fact they are superior. And that gives rise to cloning experiments and the experiments of, of raping women through mind control and grabbing their children and, and teaching them the great psi abilities that these people have. I've explained in the past that these great psi abilities have to do with the soul wounding that the people have. In other words, with the, the missequencing of the DNA that they have, that's carried for the soul DNA that's carried from lifetime to lifetime. When they, um, when they have children by these raping means, by these cloning means, what happens is the children have half of their soul DNA very similar to that of their antisocial parent. Because they are raped, they carry the, the, um, the deeper soul wounding involved in rape and probably in the murder of their mother. So they are likely to rape and murder women. 
uh, in the case of cloning, what we have, if a true, if a, there are varying degrees of antisocial personalities, as I've discussed priorly, for a pure antisocial personality um, who has absolutely no conscience and no compunctions about any of the human strictures, uh, social behavior, societal expectations, that uh, kind of person, uh, when he is cloned, recreates the same uh, type of person, not the half person that would be if the original father had raped a woman, but a true and total antisocial person. In their terms, the true hybrid. There was a theory going on uh, a while back in the 2000s about, and, and it, in a sense it was a true story with regard to this group of people, the true, true hybrid being someone who couldn't be with women because he would kill them. This was true of all those children that, that were created through rape and, uh, and killing of the mother or minimization in, of the mother in some way. Uh, he couldn't be with women because they used him up too fast and who had to be with men instead and uh, what, what else was it? Who raped, who raped women, who raped people because of that initial act that created their conception and the aftermath of that. Uh, and they also felt uh, about drinking of blood that it was necessary for them to continue to exist. To kill was the initiation ceremony for that group of, of young people. And um, uh, then to drink blood. And so they, they, they were actually demonized. There was some way of in, inducing in them uh, demonic obsession. That, and, and that, I think, was responsible for the drinking of blood, although I can't really attest to that. So, so these are my ideas. My ideas are that, that these kinds of consequential experiments have to do with antisocial personality traits, which have to do with uh, DNA uh, missequencing, miscoding that needs to be corrected through the incoming light, and and that that people who who have these tendencies can can help solve the situation themselves by looking to the possibility of their own DNA being damaged by the acts that they do for the benefit of the mental tangles that are going on, the, the construct of time and space that's prevalent in the world today, but which is completely false. I know no one has talked very much about DNA as a vehicle for karma, but I'd like to explain what little I know about that as well as I can. The actions that we undertake on Earth uh, make our karma better or worse. Now, our karma is carried with us from lifetime to lifetime. It's embodied in our DNA. We have our physical template and our soul template, our physical DNA and our soul DNA. Um, apparently the way that it works is uh, if we make bad choices such as to murder someone then um, a change occurs in our DNA uh, that, that cr takes us farther from the ideal that our soul has for us the ideal human expression that our soul has for us in the same way, a life of joy, a life full of love, a life with expression of charity towards our fellow man helps to um, change the miscoding, the poor DNA sequences uh, that we carry from other lifetimes so that they become closer to the ideal that the soul wishes the physical form to express. Now I'd like to give an example in terms of medical knowledge that, that also applies to my theory about DNA uh, miscoding 
caused by wrong action. That has to do with cancer. Everybody knows, it's common knowledge today, that when we make poor choices with regard to lifestyle, then we're more likely to come down with cancer. Yes. And that if we live a very healthy lifestyle, we're more likely to, to have a healthier body, one that's not plagued with cancer and other diseases. But what actually happens, according to my theory, is that through poor lifestyle choices, we alter our DNA so that some of our DNA expresses the, what, we, what we call cancer. It becomes cancerous. It creates cancerous cells, you see. And this malcoding or miscoding or recoding uh, in a false sense of the DNA is carried through our soul template of DNA with us from lifetime to lifetime. So, so this, is, this is a good example here. Medical science knows that poor lifestyle choices cause cancer, but the understanding, the deeper understanding that's missing is that poor lifestyle choices change our karma, and our, our karma expresses itself through miscoding in the DNA that scientists call cancer cancerous cells, suddenly, spontaneously cancerous cells. These are just a few examples. It could be implied in any context to all kinds of diseases that a person has. And it also applies to all kinds of genetic issues and so forth. All these indicate DNA miscoding that needs to be corrected and will be corrected through the incoming light during the dawn of the new age for humankind. Y'all take care. Love you lots.